The BBC has learned that Commonwealth leaders are preparing to defy the UK at their summit in Samoa by agreeing to examine ways of securing reparatory justice for the transatlantic slave trade. The British Prime Minister, Sakia Starma, is now there in Apia for the summit. Reparations could cost the UK billions of dollars. On Wednesday, Sakia said that there was no question that slavery was abhorrent, but he wanted the meeting on the Pacific Island to focus on the here and now. Downing Street had previously said that reparations would not be on the agenda for the meeting. King Charles and Queen Camilla are present for the Commonwealth Heads of Government meeting. They will complete a day of engagements before meeting with Commonwealth leaders at the end of the week. Well, let's hear from the Foreign Minister of the Bahamas, Frederick Mitchell, who says the time has come to talk about reparations. I think at the moment, CARICOM countries want the conversation to start about it. There appears to be even a reluctance to have the conversation start. Many of the institutions in the UK have already conceded the point of apology. The British government isn't quite there. But at this time, the discussion needs to be had about the history of this and the ill effects of what happened uh, after slavery was abolished, which continue to affect our societies today. Our political editor, Chris Mason, has gathered the thoughts of Sukir when he was on the way to Samoa. The British Prime Minister emphasising to us on the plane here, the 28-hour journey from the UK, that as far as the conversation about reparations was concerned, he felt that it was too backward-looking. He didn't want conversations to get bogged down over it, and instead he wanted to focus on the future around trade and climate change, for instance. But now, courtesy of this uh, leak to our colleague James Landell, the BBC's diplomatic correspondent, we have seen a draft communique, uh, that is summit speak for the draft conclusions of an event like this, in which there is a specific reference in a couple of paragraphs to a desire from some Commonwealth countries, as you say, not least those in the Caribbean, for a conversation to properly begin about the question of reparations and the suggestions that some countries, the UK among them, owe, so goes the argument, a debt uh, to countries that feel they were disproportionately enslaved and that sh there should be apologies for it and there should be financial compensation for it. As far as the UK is concerned, there is no desire to uh, express any uh, apology uh, or indeed uh, to allocate any money. But it does look like it will come up in the conversation here, even if it isn't on the, the formal agenda. Well, let's speak now to Professor Robert Beckford, who is a Professor of Climate and Social Justice at the University of Winchester. He has written and studied extensively on the subject. Very good to have you with us. As they obviously start to debate this in Samoa at this meeting, Robert, I wonder if you could explain to us if what some of these Caribbean nations are particularly calling for is reparations that are financial, or are they also looking for some kind of reparatory justice? Yeah, that's a good way to start. There's a nuance between reparations and reparatory justice. Best way to explain it is to think of reparations as a more legal process, focusing on proving that an injustice has taken place and then using legal measures as a way of redress. In contrast, reparatory justice is much more spiritual, for want of a better word. It's not punitive in its outcome. Instead, it seeks reconciliation. And how you get there is quite interesting because it does involve things like truth and reconciliation, restitution, but also there has to be a conversation about compensation. So two slightly different but related concepts. And it's a conversation that all sides obviously need to be party to. So there has to be engagement from everyone. But who should lead the process? Oh, that's quite clear. In any form of reparatory justice or even reparation, it has to be victim-led. Those who are the descendants of enslaved Africans in this case have to frame the discussion. The perpetrators can't lead. You know, perpetrator justice is, is really mafia justice. It's the wrong way to be looking at this. So they are within their rights, within the legal structures of international law, within the moral structures of reparatory justice to be raising these questions. A UN judge, Patrick Robinson, concluded last year that the UK owed more than £18 trillion pounds in reparations for its historic involvement in slavery in 14 different countries. So we're talking about massive figures. Do most people involved in the process want to see it start with a talk about financial uh, reparation? 
No, because that's not the way in which you do reparations or reparatory justice. They all begin with truth seeking. And that's why I was happy to hear Keir Starmer gesturing towards the need to engage in research around this. You have to make sure that the nation understands what slavery actually entailed. Look, we don't teach it in schools. Most people couldn't tell you the difference between Marcus Garvey and Marcus Rashford when it comes to Caribbean history. So it begins with understanding what took place and then moving on to asking the fundamental question, how do we heal the wounds? And that's at the core of both reparations and reparatory justice. How do we bring about healing and reconciliation? What about Sakia, though, saying that he wants this now, the discussions in Samoa to be about facing forward rather than having what he called a very long, endless discussion about reparations on the past? He's got a faulty historiography and cosmology, or a limited one, let's say. And what I mean by that is... In many cultures, especially the people he's going to speak to, the past, the present and the future are intimately interrelated. So it's impossible in African and African-Caribbean cultures to talk about the present and the future without reflecting on the past. It's just a different way of imagining how the world works. So I would say he needs to basically become a bit more culturally sensitive and understand that people understand the past in, in, in completely different ways to the way in which he understands it. And look... History is something we do fantastically well in this country. We're always looking backwards in order to understand the present. So care just needs to be a little bit more egalitarian. Uh, afford the Caribbean nations the, the historical luxury which we indulge ourselves in uh, in this country. We love the past and looking at how it impacts the future. They're just asking to be treated the same way. Professor Beckford, very good to get your thoughts. Thank you so much for joining us.